Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing great. We're gonna talk about a great comment. Now when I say great comment, it wasn't the nicest. There was a lot of caps involved and some, uh, how should I say, exclamation marks. But we're gonna make it clean and this one is from Mo. So this is an inspired video entitled The Real Estate Crash by Mo. Here we go. There could be a crash in commercial real estate. However, your thesis on residential real estate is flawed. Rates could go through the roof and impact commercial real estate. However, when it comes to residential real estate, people will have to buy without a mortgage because rates will be through the roof. Residential rent prices are through the roof. It wasn't like this during the 2000 housing bust. This was due to overbuilding and oversupply of residential homes. That is definitely not the case right now, exclamation mark. All right, so first off, thank you most so much for the comment. And actually, um, this is why I'm dedicating it to you. And we're gonna change 2000 to 2008 because I have a feeling that's what you're referring to. Now we're gonna throw up some really neat data points. We're gonna talk about them here. And also I got a couple of charts to go over with for you, okay? Also, by the way, I had a lot of people call or email and say, hey, I missed out on the uh, pre-filming discount of the real estate crash course. I've got a coupon code for 70% off the real estate crash course down below if you guys wanna take a look at it. Now let's talk about this and let's give you a different spin. I wanna get you thinking differently. How to identify different cycles, whether it be the Federal Reserve interest rate cycle, whether we're going down or whether we're going up, also, we want to be able to get you looking at where we are in the housing uh, cycle itself, the price cycle. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. All right, so let's dive right in and start with recent uh, um, uh, residential builds. Let's throw up a chart right now of residential builds and let's explain this. So first off, this chart, number of residential build permits issued for new private construction in the United States from January of 1968 to September of 2023. Now, one thing you're going to first off see is that Oh, Mo was right. A ton more residential real estate permits were pulled from the time frame of 2001 to 2005. And that's where the story begins. You see, we peaked at 2005. Everything started crashing mid 2005. We're looking now at a uh, decline from 2005 to where we bottomed at about the end of 2009. Now, again, there's some really interesting data points that show um, why this is going to be so much worse. And the reason why, well, here, I don't want to blow it, but you look at what's going on right now in 2022 and 2023, actually, we'll start in 2021, is a massive decline in building permits. Now, you could say that this is because of COVID, pandemic, supply chain shortages, all of those have factors in this. But one thing you don't realize, or many people don't realize, is that there was never a housing shortage. Quite frankly, the only reason why there was a housing shortage, or at least that's what you're being told on the mainstream media, back in the uh, early 2000s, was because George Bush came out and said, hey, we're going to make everything affordable. We're gonna make home ownership affordable. And so we're gonna change the way the government does things or backs the mortgages, and we're gonna get ourselves to some crazy crappy loans. Don't worry, they're still here. So lending got super, super cheap after the 2000, 2001.com bubble burst, right? So we started to see people rampantly speculating in the uh, uh, housing market. And the reason why, and the reason why you see it taking off really in earnest after 2002, 2003, was because builders started going, holy cow, people want homes because the people are going, what do you mean I could buy a house right now? My mortgage would be about the same as my rent. So they dove right into the housing market because all they cared about, or at least 90% of home buyers out there care about, is how much is my monthly mortgage? That's all they care about. Whether it be their vehicle costs or their college costs, they just care about, can I make the monthly mortgage? And that causes a massive expansion in that debt bubble. Okay, so let's compare what was going on in 2008 compared to now. Check this out. Rates. Let's talk about the Fed funds rate, two and a half percent in the year of 2008, compared to currently 4.83%, which we're sitting at almost a doubling. Okay, now this is something that's very interesting. 30 year mortgage average uh, rate was a little over 6% in 2008. It hasn't gone up that much. Right now we're sitting at 7.1%. That is, if you think about it historically, it's not too bad, right? Here's where it gets tricky. The median home price in quarter four of 2008 was $180,000. Now we have to pull in 2007 data. 2007 quarter four, median home price was $205,000. That is literally a drop 
of $25,000 of the median home price from in one year. That is a massive drop, right? Well, like I said before, the market was already dropping. Now, compared to 2022 December, $467,000 for the uh, median home price in America. That is over doubling. All right. So now we have a stronger mortgage payment, right? Because we have a higher mortgage rate, not much, but you look at the price of the home, absolutely insane, right? But like Mo says, well, when this happens, we're all just gonna go pay cash. I don't know where this money's coming from. All right, so uh, average income per household. This is very, very uh, important. 2007, it was $50,233. In 2008, it went down a couple of bucks to $50,221. That's where you're seeing that decline. As the recession started or in earnest, it was everything was imploding, people were losing their jobs and all that kind of stuff, right? Now let's look at 2022. We went up, yay! So from 2008 to 2022, you are now making eh, a little less than $4,000 more a year. That's average. That doesn't pay the bills. No, it does not. Mo, where's this money coming from? See, that's the crazy thing. All these people tell you, well, this time it's different. What, money's gonna fall out of the sky? Well, now we've seen money fall out of the sky in the form of the Fed and the government giving us stimulus money after the pandemic started, but was that enough? Was that enough? How much did you get during COVID? Let me know. Tell me how much you got in the, in the section below in the comment section. Now, the inflation rate, let's throw up another chart. Uh, the previous decades, the inflation, this chart shows the annual inflation rate in the United States from 1990 to 2022. And there's something really important I wanna show you in this, it's really neat. So let's talk, talk about the standard, right? Our 2008 number, inflation, the government number, and please put down in the comment section if you believe those numbers, till no, till the no, no, no. was 3.75%. Now we look at an inflation rate in 2022 of 8%. Thanks, Jerome Powell. Thanks, President Borgen. So things are getting a little bit more expensive, right? So not only do we have higher interest rates, mortgage rates, higher uh, home prices, I can't even talk about that. And then we're gonna talk about the inflation rate, much higher, right? Now, this is what's really important. Let's go back to the early 90s, a very important part of history, financial history and mortgage history that people don't realize. See, the housing uh, boom was happening after the crash of 1987, sandal, uh, savings and loan scandal, there had to be some juicing in the market. So the government and the Federal Reserve came in and juiced the market. Well, they actually created a housing bubble because housing starts were taking off. Let's throw back up that housing start, uh, chart and let's look at that. So if you look at the years of 1990, to 1991, let's say, we saw a drop in new home uh, permits. The reason why we saw this drop in this new home permits is because the government and the Fed came out with a program to where if you were building a home, they stacked three or four points on top of all of your other fees when you're going out to build the dream house that you've always wanted. Or if a, a, a real estate speculator wanted to buy a, build a bunch of spec homes, he or she had to now pay an additional three or four points. Now to give you an idea of how much a point costs, one point on a mortgage origination fee equals 1% of the loan amount. So let's say you're going out and taking out a $400,000 mortgage to go and build the dream house of your dreams, that'd be pretty big back then, or you're building a bunch of homes, you'd have to pay an additional $4,000 up front just to get that mortgage. So you can only imagine what happened to the construction industry. It absolutely cratered, which led us into a recession. Thanks again, Jerome Powell, and whoever the president was back then, put it down in the comment section. Point being is this, you see that dip in those numbers, and those are really telling of what it was going on back then. And again, how Federal Reserve monetary policy and government intervention into a market and how they get their grubby little hands involved and screw everything up can really screw up a market, especially new homes. So now let's go to this last point. And this is very important because, well, I made it up. It's called the inflation, or sorry, the income to reality uh, zone. When we're talking about anything, whether it be an auto loan bubble, um, auto sales bubble, uh, con con debt bubble, or we're talking about home bubble, right? A home real estate bubble. We have to take into this, uh, this sort of uh, little chart that I made up. And what that is, is I break up the average ordinary take-home income of, of, of a community, a city, a state, or a nation, right? And we break it into thirds. The first third of that pay take-home is for necessities. This is food, shelter, just normal shelter to shelter your head, the bare bones, how much it would cost to get into the cheapest rental or the cheapest home 
in your area, right? Uh, electricity, energy, gasoline to drive your car, and then a car, right? Just a bare bones car. It's gonna, got four wheels, it's gonna get you somewhere. All right, the next uh, uh, third of that take home pay is the extra dreams. This is the house of your dreams, the one that you can impress the people you don't even respect down the road, and a fancy car that you can't afford, all right? But you're just telling yourself, your spouse, your loved ones, if I only spend $300 more a month on this car payment, I could afford a Maserati that's gonna be too expensive to fix. Or if I spend just another $1,000 a month on this house, it'll come with an extra garage so that I could put that Maserati in at least until I can't pay it. So the point is, is that's that extra third. And then the last third, that's savings. Why? Because that's the thing that everybody thinks about last. Quite frankly, on a national level, that's where most people are. They think about inflation, or sorry, savings. Well, actually they think about inflation last too until it actually hits them. Point being is that that's the top. Now that's easy to get rid of. Savings, pa, who needs that? And so what happens is as people's income bumps, uh, that top two third line right there, that's when you start seeing the housing market getting heavy, getting frothy, and you start to see a deceleration in home sales, right? But here's the one thing that Mo was forgetting. See, people have to move. They have to move because there are job location changes. I wanna get out of a crazy state, name that crazy state below in the comment section. And I've, I, my parents have passed away um, oh, and, and they gave me this house and I already have a house, so I don't need a second house, so let's sell the house. Point being is that life does not stop, but velocity definitely changes. And right now you're seeing that peak of those housing prices and the reason why is because there's so few on the market. Aha, until unemployment comes in. And if you go back in history, you'll start to see that everything started to collapse, not in 2008, not 2005, seven, but down actually in 2006. And the reason why is because unemployment started ticking up. And by 2008, unemployment was running rapid. Well, now that's where we're at now. Lots of people are losing jobs. Pre-foreclosures are blowing up. And there is got to be a time, a day of reckoning, when the balance sheet of these banks is overburdened by holding onto these properties, trying to work out deals. As a matter of fact, right now, we've already seen the government, the state governments and the federal government working out right now 40-year loan fixes, not like a full-blown 40-year loan fixed rate program like you see Fannie and Freddie backed um, mortgages in the 30-year realm, but you see literally their solution right now is a 40-year stabilization. For somebody that's missing their payments, they say, look, let's re-amortize it at a higher rate You'll save a couple of bucks. You'll be able to miss a couple of payments. We'll put it on the back end of your home. But you know what? For 40 years now, you're in your home at just a few dollars less. This is not a solution. This is showing you right now that the crash is upon us. So guys, if you got something out of this, thank you so much for hitting the thumbs up. There is the, the link 70% off to the real estate crash course so that I can help you learn how to think differently using the data and using real world experience why this real estate crash is going to be here for quite some time and how it is going to be absolutely amazing. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching The Economic Ninja. It's out.